So here we are in the midst of our proof of the art gallery theorem. The art gallery theorem, again, we have n walls in our gallery. So here's an example with 12 walls. And we want to prove that n over 3 guards suffices to guard this museum. So here's our example. We have 12 walls. And what we've done is we've thought of this uh, room as a polygon with 12 vertices. Okay. And by the lemma we proved last time, we know that we can triangulate this polygon and a triangulation is just um, putting interior diagonals inside the shape until every face that we have is a triangle. That's great, but again, not only, we know that we put in n minus three diagonals, we know that we have n minus two triangles, but that would be n minus two guards if we put one in every triangle. And of course we can see that, okay, well, if I have a guard here, I don't need one here, and I don't need one here, and I don't need one here. So we can do better than n minus 2. By the theorem, we can do n over 3. So how can we actually get there? Well, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to color the vertices of my graph. Okay? So let's put, a, let's put that as a lemma that I can actually do it. So lemma 2 says that a triangulation, the triangulation will help us with the coloring, a triangulation of a polygon is three colorable. And now before we do this, I want to point out that just because you have a bunch of triangles doesn't mean that what you have is actually three colorable. So let's let's look here at a non-example. So if I have the following shape comprised entirely of triangles, This shape is not three colorable. So I can think of, okay, I can color that vertex, I can color that vertex, I can color that vertex, but this central vertex needs a new color. It needs a new color, and in fact, this is actually K4. So triangles, this is not three colorable. So it's important that it's non-trivial what I'm trying to prove, that a triangulation of a polygon is three colorable. Why is this not the triangulation of a polygon? Because here I have a vertex on the inside. This is an interior vertex. This is not an interior vertex because this is the outside. If I put in a line here and I expected to be able to three color this thing now, well now I can't do it because now this thing is, these two guys are gonna have to be different colors as is this guy and I'm gonna end up with a problem. But because I'll have this example, but here I don't have that situation. I have a polygon and I just put diagonals on the outside of it. So I'm gonna prove that this is three colorable. So let's see how we would prove that. Okay, again, let's do it by induction. So we're gonna do this by induction on N, which is the number of vertices. Induction on N equal the number of vertices. Okay, our base case, as usual, is the smallest non-trivial case, which for polygons is three. So if n equals three, yes, it's three colorable because we only have three vertices, so pick your favorite color for each vertex. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is, as usual, get our inductive hypothesis in here. Our inductive hypothesis says that if P prime has fewer than n vertices, then it's three colorable. So just like with last time, our goal is going to be to cut down our polygon into something smaller. So now we're gonna assume that n is greater than or equal to four. How are we gonna cut down our polygon into something smaller? Well, we can just look. How would we do that? Look inside here. Any of these diagonals, any one of these diagonals, if you take it, splits my shape into two pieces. Okay? So let's take, for example, this diagonal right here. And we're going to call this U and we're going to call this V. Okay, this splits me into an upper half and a lower half. Notice that with this non-example down here, I could delete a diagonal, but I haven't broken my shape by doing that. I've merely consolidated faces. Here, if I cut it here, I actually have two separate disconnected shapes. That's the key. That's why this works. So we're going to pick any diagonal, 
pick any diagonal, because now we have those diagonals, say u to v, and that's what I've just done there. Okay, this splits p into the top, p1, and the bottom, p2, based on which side of that diagonal they're on. Okay, this one, by the inductive hypothesis, these two are both three colorable. So what we could do is we could go through and we could color the top. So let me three color the top. So I've got triangles. So I'm just gonna go, I know by induction I can do it. Think about this guy, this guy should be red. And then over here, this one should be green. Now, I have to actually three color the bottom too and nothing said that I had to use red and green for u and v, except I can always do that, right? I can always permute the colors. So if I let P1 use the colors, say one, two, and three, and we're gonna let P2 use colors, let's say A, B, and C, then all I have to do is set the color of U and the color of V to be the same as each other. So if down here I called this color A and this color B, then I would just say A is red, B is green, and now keep coloring. So okay, let me finish this coloring here. I can do it here. I can color this guy. And you can see that there's actually an algorithm I'm using to three color this thing, and it's deterministic once I picked, um, once I picked two of the vertices to color. Okay, so there's my three coloring. Now I've done it. I've three colored it, so that proves the lemma. And now let's finish proving the theorem. Why n over three guards? I've just three colored it. So by the pigeonhole principle, there exists a color with less than or equal to n over three vertices of that color. It's not the case that I need to have all vertices of, or all colors appear with the same multiplicity. So if we're thinking about here, it looks like I've got four red, I've got five blue, and I've got three green. So not all colors occur with the same frequency. So in this case here, n equals 12, so n over three is four, and yes, I've got something with, well, actually I've got two. Green is the best I can do. So green occurs with the fewest, but the point is by the pigeonhole principle, somebody gets at most n over three vertices. Place a guard, place a guard at every vertex of that color. So my guards in this case, I could do it by saying my guards are going to be the green guys. I'm gonna put a guard here, a guard here, and a guard here. And now every spot of my museum is visible to one of those guards because every triangle in my museum is adjacent to one of those green vertices. Every triangle touches a green vertex, which is a guard. That means that all triangles are guarded. So not only do I have a proof that n over three suffices, but I actually have a constructive proof in terms of once you actually do this and carry out the coloring, I know where to do it. So in this case, I actually got n over four, but if I had posed in the red vertices, then I would have used four guards, which is n over three exactly. So again, sometimes you can do it with fewer and it depends on how colorable your graph is.